Hello, my fellow comic book collectors. This is going to be a uh, really big, like I'm not sure if you can see how big this is, but these are a huge unboxing video. <laughs> like, this is, these are really heavy. Um, so yeah, so it's a really big unboxing video. Uh, this big box at the bottom is from my comic shop and there's a few other things that came in the mail. I'm gonna show you what's all inside of this. I'm gonna actually open the boxes in this video so you can see my reaction. I think, based on this one, I know I, I, I ordered a bunch of really cool Golden Age comics. So I think that's what's inside that one. I want to show you what's inside the little ones first, just get them done. I'm going to try to open these up quickly. I know it's kind of annoying. So, you know, you can fast, maybe fast forward the parts uh, where I'm unboxing stuff. Sorry. Uh, but I'll try to do this quickly. So you can, so it's a, you know, quick video. Okay, so, oops, <laughs> I dropped the comic on the floor. Um, so this one is actually really cool. Uh, this is um, Bugs Bunny. Uh, it's actually four color, I forgot what number, four color, 187. And this is the first appearance of Yosemite Sam. In comics and in this he actually instead of like his uh, I think he's like got like a uh, you know his uh, red beard and stuff and um, yeah it's just kind of a cool first appearance I I, I like trying to get in, getting these uh, four color first appearances so this is just a another in the series of four colors that I'm trying to get uh, I'm not sure if this is Bugs Bunny's first appearance I don't believe it is I think it's just Yosemite Sam's first appearance but uh, yeah, kind of a cool comic. And next one. So yeah, so um, I kind of buy way too many comics in life, but <laughs> I'm having fun. I'm <laughs> just buying all these crazy comics. Um, you know, I'm enjoying being mortgage free, I guess. Oh, wow. Okay, this one came really quickly. I just ordered this one. Um, this is uh, one that I actually tr almost bought earlier, um, but I'm not, I read the story. I thought it was so-so. I, I really thought it was um, okay. I, I, I won't say bad, but uh, I won't say it was amazing or anything like that. But it's one that I heard that they're gonna option. So I figured, hey, I've read it. I might as well actually get the physical comic. And this is Monstrous. Um, this is the first print. Uh, I got it for 50 bucks, so uh, still within that reasonable price range. Um, I think this book has really climbed. Uh, you know, it's anywhere from $50 to $100 for the first print of number one. And, you know, as I said, it's okay. It's, it's, I wouldn't say it's the greatest story, but um, yeah, it was okay. It's interesting. Okay, so um, then there's another big one here. It's Odd shaped box. And I think I got it. Okay. Hopefully, this is the one I think it is. It's always hard when they put so much tape, but um, I'm trying to open it quickly. Quickly. Oh, okay. So this is uh, another Soti book. So um, as you know, I'm collecting books from the Seduction of the Innocent. They put tape right across the comic, but okay, I'm gonna get rid of all that so I can show it to you. I don't like when they use this non-painter's tape. It's too sticky. Okay, so this is uh, Crime, and, Crime and Punishment number two. So from 1948. Uh, I forgot the reason why this was mentioned in The Seduction of Innocent, but it was mentioned in The Seduction of Innocent. And it's another book uh, that, you know, influenced... Uh, the eventual collapse of the golden age of comics. 
and led to the Common Code Authority. Uh, so, you know, another in that collection that I'm trying to get of all the books that were mentioned in The Seduction of Innocent, there's about, I think, 155, 156 books mentioned in total. And this is one of them. So I have about 70 or 80 of the series now. <laughs> it's like, so I'm trying to get the whole collection. But a lot of them are pretty expensive. Like um, the ones that I've been looking for that are just really kind of hard to get and expensive are the Phantom Ladies. I, I really want to get those. Um, but they're really expensive. So I just, every time, and I always lose out on the bids. Okay, another, I believe this is another. <laughs> I believe this is another from The Seduction of Innocent. Um, this is a L.B. Cole cover too. This is a really great one. So another really cool uh, comic. This is Terrors of the Jungle. I'm not sure if this was mentioned in The Seduction of Innocent, but it is, a, a, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, but it's another really great, uh, just L.B. Cole cover. Uh, bondage cover. Uh, this is from the like late 40s early 50s i believe uh just a really great you know good girl art cover let me just show that a little bit better you can always tell um lb cole's artwork by uh the colors that he uses he always uses these kind of i don't know psychedelic i want to say psychedelic colors i don't know it's kind of like these really orangey colors um so yeah i, I think it's like you know he's his style is very very obvious when you see it and uh, his his artwork is really hot right now. Uh, you know, it's golden age artists, you know, artwork, but it's just really hot right now. This L.B. Cole uh, artwork. So this is Terrors of the Jungle, number seventeen, and it's just a really great, really great comic. So, and then then we have the big the big boy. Uh, so I'm gonna open this up. Oh my goodness. This is okay. So this is my pet peeve. These things, I really don't like, um, these, uh, pop, uh, you know, the peanuts. I'd like to hear in the comments below. What do you guys think about these? Do you guys love these or hate these? I, I personally hate these. If you can pack a box without it, I'd be so happy. So, um, just to think that's a big pet peeve of mine. I, I really don't like them because they go all over the place and I don't know. They, I really find them kind of annoying. So you'll see a bunch of slabs. Some more slabs. <laughs> Big bag of books. And another big bag of books. And look at me, that's everything. So that's everything inside the box. And I'm going to show you what's inside the bags. Okay. I, 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 it says like on one of them, I can see what it is. I think these will be cool. These are a lot of Golden Age um, comics. I think it's the, the one that I was waiting for. That uh, has like a lot of really cool 40 stuff. So I'm gonna show you this one. Oh wow! Okay, so there's a lot of really cool things in this. Uh, just looking at it, I can tell lots of awesome stuff. So um, I'm collecting a lot of the Jungle Girl kind of artwork from the '40s and '50s, and this is Kanga Comics, kind of like Jungle Comics. It was just sort of a spin-off series. So Kanga Comics, and it's number number one. So Kanga number one. <laughs> it's the first in the series. So kind of a, you know, kind of a cool one. Not expensive, actually. That's not an expensive book. Um, a lot of these are not that bad. They're really going up now. But uh, when I bought them, they were not too bad. This is uh, Jungle Comics 153. And I kind of like these kind of good girl, jungle girl <laughs> art, I guess. Okay. And this is actually one that um, a friend of mine, another channel that I liked watching is Jerry the Jitterbug. 
and I recommend, I'll maybe even link his uh, channel in the description. He's highly underrated, uh, like underviewed. He needs to get more views. So he's a really great channel. He and I both seem to like a lot of the same stuff. He likes collecting Captain Marvel, and so do I. Um, and this is one Captain Marvel that he really needs to pick up. And you can pick it up cheaply because not many people realize what it is. This was mentioned in The Seduction of the Innocent. And the reason this was mentioned in Seduction of the Innocent was he was talking to a, a young boy uh, who was mentioning this comic. And in this comic, uh, they basically make somebody's head disappear. And, you know, it's like some magic or something. And, uh, you know, he thought that that sort of decapitation was, you know, very disturbing that this boy, you know, understood what it was and, and um, was, you know, uh, you know, maybe influenced by it uh, in some weird way. So this is actually not an expensive comic, uh, considering what it is. Uh, it's a, you know, early Captain Marvel, and it's um, one of those ones where it is mentioned in the Seduction of the Innocent. Not many people realize that it is in the Seduction of the Innocent, but it is. It's Captain Marvel 101. So really important uh, uh, issue to pick up. So this is uh, Jungle Comics number 20, and another Bondage Good Girl art cover. So yeah, it's really cool. And it's a low grade. Uh, the early Jungle Comics are pretty it's pretty pricey, actually. Uh, like in, anything below 30 is a, you know, usually pretty expensive, especially the Bondage covers. So this is a Bondage cover. This is a low grade. It's like a one. <laughs> it doesn't look that bad, but um, it, I think it's the spine that's a bit of a mess and it has maybe brittle pages. So it's kind of a... But it looks... It actually presents really well. Um, and this is number 106. More jungle comics. Uh, I'm trying to get like all the bondage covers and all the kind of good girl art covers from jungle comics. I really like jungle comics. So it's uh, another one. And another Bondish cover. <laughs> this is number 91. I like the rhino and, you know, the girl sort of, you know, trapped, you know, as this rhino is charging at her. That's kind of cool. So this is number 91. Another Bondish cover, number 62. I like uh, that 40 style, you know, the way that they draw the women, uh, you know, with the sort of that hairstyle. Like, kind of reminds me of Betty Page a bit. I don't know. I always like that. So a lot of good girl art here. Uh, this is number 62. Now this is uh, another from the Seduction of the Innocent. <laughs> this is Web of Evil. Really rare. Really hard to find comic. Web of Evil, Evil number one. Uh, it's just another really hard to find comic. Uh, every so often you see these come up on auction and they're pretty expensive. <laughs> I think I paid 400 for this. So just to give you a sense. And it's in a 3.5. It's a reasonable grade. So a uh, pretty pricey book, just so you know. That's Web of Evil. Uh, it's actually one of these ones. Okay, I, I really should mention some of the cool things you should look for. Not only is this from The Seduction of the Innocent, but it's got a skull cover. Now, anytime you have a skull cover from the 40s, 40s horror, it's going to be a little bit more valuable. So... You can actually, if you if you ever go into a shop and you see some like uh, old like golden age comics and they have a skull, pick them up because <laughs> there's collectors that look for those skull covers, especially from like uh, golden age horror. So this one is got so many things going for it. It's you know it's a number one <laughs> from Web of Evil. It's a skull cover and was mentioned in the Seduction of Innocence. So this make it just makes it a really rare and uh, valuable book just so you know uh next one some more jungle comics lots of jungle comics in this uh hall uh it's 127 another like you know bondage cover uh again collectors will look for these kind of bondage covers any t like they'll even mention it whenever you get like a cg a cgc slab They'll actually mention that it's a bondage cover because uh, collectors will look for these. So the bondage covers are always a little bit more popular. And the next one's actually one of my favorite covers from Jungle Comics. I just really love this comic uh, cover. Um, so it's a bondage cover, but it's also got these like 
uh, like crocodiles just about to snap. It looks like they're about to eat her. <laughs> like, I just think that's really great, that action, and get the, the uh, I think that's Kanga, uh, you know, swooping down to uh, basically stab <laughs> this crocodile that's about to eat his girlfriend. So I just think that's a really great one. This one's a mid-grade. It's quite, you know, reasonable grade. So this was a little bit more, this is a more expensive one because it is that bondage cover in a higher grade as well. And um, this is one that, uh, the next one is somebody told me about this one and I, I thought, oh, I gotta, I gotta find it. I didn't pay much for it. Uh, but somebody told me that watches my channel that this is kind of a cool comic. This is uh, Rip Hunter Time Masters, Time Master, and it's number 21. It's kind of like this uh, Miss Universe contest of all these women around the universe. And it's just, you know, uh, kind of a sexy good girl art cover. So this is Rip Hunter uh, 21, and it's from 1961. It's a nice Silver Age comic. And this one is Avengers uh, 13. And this is the first appearance of uh, Count Nefaria. And Count Nefaria is one of those characters that maybe not a huge character within uh, X-Men and Avengers, but he was the one who is the main bad guy in um, Giant Size, no, uh, not Giant Size, um, uh, X-Men 94 which is kind of the return of the new X, or the, not the return, but the X, the relaunch of the X-Men series when they went from being just a bunch of reprints into regular, you know, comics again, and with the whole new team. So he was the main bad guy in that. Uh, and maybe a, a character that's maybe a little bit under, under the radar for most people that probably should be picked up. So this is Avengers uh, 13. Kind of a cool first appearance. And one more Jungle Comics. Jungle Comics, a number uh, 150. <laughs> it was a very late issue. This is a, like I, this is like a ten to twenty dollar comic. It's really inexpensive, um, but it's another bondage cover. You know, you can see her feet are all bound, and you know, another bondage cover. Just a really great cover. I, I like these kind of action kind of covers. You know, you see them like <laughs> all fighting each other. It's kind of cool. Okay, so that's that big. And now, um, this is going to be even cooler. These are ones that I'm really excited, actually. Okay, so... This is Dollman number eight. Now, Dollman number eight uh, is another Golden Age comic. Dollman is kind of like this little guy that's got superpowers, <laughs> but that's not the reason why I got this comic. Um, Dollman number eight is the first appearance of Torchy. Uh, Torchy is a character developed by Bill Ward, and it's kind of this, uh, a lot of her artwork is good girl art. And uh, it's kind of a cool character that I really like. I, I really like Torchy. Um, and it's a character that um, is totally under the radar for most people. Probably most people have never even heard of Torchy. But it's a character that I like. Um, and this is her first appearance in comics. Dollman number eight. A very rare, <laughs> a very expensive comic. So uh, again, probably in that $400 range um for for her first appearance and this is a uh, mid-grade you know it's a four or five according to them but maybe i'd say maybe even a five it's quite quite nice looking so that's doll man number eight and then another cool one is uh jojo uh congo king and i believe this is um this is number seven which i believe is the first in the series of jojo so it's kind of a cool bondage one because she's kind of attached to this like it looks like almost like an armored elephant, and it's kind of cool. So this is a really uh, I, I actually saw this on Heritage just recently go pretty high, um, but I didn't pay that much for it. I paid like a hundred and something for it, so I, I got it for a good price. 
and it's mid range it's mid grade one so quite nice if i think it would have been a high grade but there's like a chip in this corner that's been removed if it wasn't for that it presents like a nine <laughs> this is like looks really solid um just a very high grade except for that one chip in the corner so um that brings the grade down to like a four or five so just a really nice really nice comic uh jojo congo king no one more bag and then i can show you the slabs and then so if you stayed this long i know this is a longer video but this is a big haul it's just a, a lot of comics that came and um but it's a lot of golden age it's pretty good that way and I have to get the tape off this so hopefully open all this up oops Ugh, I hate dropping stuff on the floor okay so more jungle comics as i said i'm trying to get all the bondage covers so this is jungle comics number 73 just another great bondage cover and let's flip these around a bit okay and you know there's some that uh i just collect because uh they're you know there's some modern comics mixed in that i just didn't have so when i get the other stuff from um from my comic shop i just pick up any things that uh, filler that i'm missing from modern comics that i collect and one of the comics that i'm looking like uh, i'm collecting right now is uh robert kurtman's firepower so robert kurtman is the guy that made the walking dead and invincible and this is his newest series so uh, i just didn't have uh some of the later issues so this is number four number seven Number 11. And number six. So, and number three. I just try to pick up the whole series. I had number one and two, I believe. I just didn't have these later issues. So this is number 10. Number nine, please. Yep. Okay. And number eight. I don't know why they didn't put them in order, but <laughs> they didn't. And number five. Okay, so that's... So now I have all of the fire powers up to number 11. And another thing that I was collecting, uh, I'm a big fan of Zoltana. And... Um, Zatanna, Zatanna, Zoltana, <laughs> Zatanna, and uh, Zatanna, this is just one from that series, uh, it's like a, her second series, but it was just a really, the, the artwork from it is just amazing, uh, and I, I'm really buying it for the covers, I, I've read the stories as well, but, and the stories weren't bad, um, all different stories, but, um, you know, I thought it was so-so. I, I I wouldn't say it's the most amazing story, but the artwork was amazing. So uh, this is Zatanna number six. And then there's Zatanna number five. Just another a nice cover. If you're a big Zatanna fan like I am, um, you'll like those ones. And then I got... Uh, X women. So this is just like a uh, you know kind of modern good girl art, I guess. <laughs> so uh, just sort of uh, sexy, uh, you know, with Psylocke and looks like Rogue and uh, Storm. Uh, maybe that's Kitty Pride. I'm not sure. I'm not sure who she is. I think that's Kitty Pride. So all the different uh, Marvel characters. And now we got another Soti book. This is real. Clue, uh, number, I forgot what number this is. Uh, this is real clue. I forget which number. <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, wait, number three. That's what it is. Uh, so real clue number three. And this is another book that was mentioned in the seduction of the innocent. 
So just kind of a cool uh, comic. And Jungle Comics number 158. And again, I really like these kind of action ones and one where you can, the girl is kind of at the front, forefront. And then we have Jungle Comics number 108. And another Kanga Jungle King number 20. And this is uh, Jungle Comics number um, 157. A lot of these uh, jungle ones, jungle comics, you can pick up from from about twenty to thirty dollars in low grade, and in mid grade they get up to about fifty to a hundred dollars, and then in high grade they can go up to two hundred to three hundred dollar range. Is typical for the jungle comics. So if you're ever trying to buy them, those are the kind of price ranges you should be paying for. If it's a bondage cover, you're gonna expect a little higher than that, but for the most part, they're they're fairly affordable considering how old they are. They're from the golden age. So here's another one. Um, this is 159. Sort of a later issue. And then we have uh, 156. And then we have um, this is one that again another uh, one of my viewers. I, I do a lot of videos on controversial comics, and I especially like controversial comics that are like Disney related because it's sort of that that irony of the fact that it's like this typically family wholesome character, and it's they're doing something controversial. So this is one where I believe he gets high uh, in, inhaling gas or something like that. So um, this is uh, Disney Comics uh, Volume Ten, Number Four. And there's the, that's the controversy behind it. So it's kind of a, uh, so it's number one twelve. So that's kind of a cool, cool one. And now I just have four slabs to open up. And this is another really great cover. I really like these covers. Here, I'm actually going to take it out because it just doesn't show very well in the bag. But you can see it. It's just a really great cover. This is Jungle Comics 52. You can see like on the back. And there's like some ad for like a telescope or something like that. Or Wonders of Science. Um, so yeah, just a really great cover. As I said, I like these covers where, you know, the it's that intimate peril, like where she's like kind of like, you know, you got the bondage cover. And then you got this crocodile or some kind of animal that's about to like basically eat her. <laughs> I think that's just a really great action kind of comic. And you have the 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 hero swooping down to try to save her. So it's just a really great um, golden age cover. So this is from 1944. Give you a sense of how old it is. And. Next one, some more jungle comics. So you'll notice the theme of this video is a lot of jungle comics. Um, this is actually one of my, like, I really love this cover because uh, it's kind of like Pit in the Pendulum. Uh, you know, you got this kind of guillotine kind of thing kind of coming down that's kind of swinging across. You got this girl, she's in immediate peril. I, love, I like that situation. And she's all, you know, some bondage cover. You got the bad guy, he's like about to chop her. And then you got the, the good guy swooping in to save her. And this is a very high grade. So once, as I said, once you get into the higher grades, they're really quite scarce. Um, and this is a very high grade. Um, this is from 1948, and this is Jungle Comics 101. Actually, I had ordered this before in a lower grade and they weren't able to fill the order <laughs> so i had to upgrade it to uh, get this cover because it's one of my favorite covers it's just a really great cover uh, now two more to go
Oh, okay. So this is it. This is a this is another really awesome one. So I mentioned uh, Doll Man number eight. Doll Man number eight is the first appearance of Torchy, and this is Torchy. <laughs> this is what she looks like. Um, so that's her on the cover. She's kind of like this blonde bombshell who basically uh, goes through life always kind of like a little bit poor, and it seems like things. She's always sort of down on her luck. But at the same time, men keep on falling for her. So they offer her so many opportunities. She becomes like a Hollywood star. She becomes like, you know, uh, the mayor's uh, right-hand person. Uh, you know, all these kind of things. Uh, but uh, at the same time, uh, she's always seems to mess up those situations because of her good looks. And <laughs> it's just kind of a, she's kind of an interesting character. And this is her first series with her, her in the title. And this is Torchy number one from 1949. It's a nice golden age uh, comic. Just a really great uh, good girl art cover too. So sadly not done by um, Bill Ward, who is the one that created her. But uh, in, I think it's Torchy number three. There's only four in the series. Uh, it was done by Bill Ward. And that's a really scarce cover. Okay, so the last one is another really great cover. This is Fight Comics. And it's Fight Comics number 52. Another kind of woman in peril <laughs> bondage cover. Um, just a really great cover. I just So a lot of these are pure cover buys. I, I, you know, and since they're slabs, it doesn't really matter. I will read the comics. I read them virtually. Um, but, uh, I just really like the cover art. It's just a really great cover. This whole woman in peril situation, I really like. And actually, it's really, I like the <laughs> the comic on the back, too. It's kind of funny. You know, I love these, uh, old-style comics. Uh, not comics, but uh, ads. Where they, they, you know, it's like the typical, like, uh, you're a wimpy guy and you, um, you know. But... You know, if you follow our directions, you can become super strong and bullies won't bother you anymore. <laughs> it's like, it's kind of awesome. Uh, but yeah, I really like this cover. Really great cover. I'm not sure. What do you think? Do you like these good girl arts? Do you like these bondage covers? Tell me in the comments below. I'd really like to hear people's feedback. Um, what do you think about these Golden Age comics? Do you like the Golden Age? Are you more of a modern collector? Tell me in the comments below. And please like, comment, and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Bye for now.